like a Hellcat. Hey guys, it's RX Manga coming at you with another video. Today, I am going to be giving my opinions on the big six manga publishers, uh, Seven Seas, Dark Horse, Viz, Kodansha, Vertical, Yen Press, all those guys. Uh, my opinions on them uh, and how I personally rank them as publishers against each other. Uh, one sec. Mm, yes, good old RX energy. Give me the the strength and energy I need for when you guys rage at me for my opinions on this. Um, so I'm going to be ranking this stuff based on their how often they release, the quality of the releases, and the titles that they get. Uh, I will be giving Viz a bit of a handicap, mostly because they're the big dog on top. They got all the money. They get first dibs uh, with series from Shonen Jump, uh, so they get a lot of the mainstream titles, uh, and they just have the money to do a lot of stuff some other publishers might not be able to do. Um, so jumping right into it, first up we have Seven Seas. Now the problem, biggest problem I have with Seven Seas is the number of releases and titles that they have. I only own these four manga from Seven Seas. Uh, they just, I don't, I don't know, maybe I just don't like the titles they're buying but I just don't see any titles I like with Seven Seas on them. I, I looked through my collection and I honestly thought I didn't have any Seven Seas titles uh, until I noticed that Magical Girl Apocalypse and Magical Girl Sight, the only two here that I actually care about, um, were Seven Seas. Uh, Witchbuster, if I remember correctly, is a manhwa. Uh, it reads left to right and is in omnibus format, uh, so that is a huge downfall for um, them and now in number five technically the last place um, don't freak out but it is Dark Horse now the problem with Dark Horse is one the frequencies of their releases is awful uh, Planetets was only two volumes so those came and went real quick Berserk, everybody knows, comes out once every, you know, few millennia or so. Um, I Am a Hero, I think, is on, like, five months, I think. And it's in Omnibus, so that's no good. <laughs> Blade of the Immortal um, is really good, uh, and it's actually in a, a surprisingly good Omnibus. Uh, but it reads left to right for no explicable reason. Um... And these are the titles that I like from Dark Horse. Uh, Trigun, eh, eh, not really. Uh, but they have four really good titles, but they don't have a variety of titles that I enjoy. Uh, they have some weird thing with omnibuses that they like. They just like omnibus. I'm surprised they haven't released Berserk in an omnibus yet. Um, they changed the spines on the uh, Berserk volumes, which pissed a lot of people off. So, Berserk to me, or Berserk, <laughs> the only thing they're really known for, Berserk, but Dark Horse to me just doesn't do enough for me. Now, their quality is pretty good. Their omnibuses are pretty shit, honestly, but they, they usually have pretty good ink. Their paper quality is not very good. Um, in here, they actually stepped up their game by a huge margin. Uh, the paper is a lot better quality. The ink seems to be a lot better quality. Uh, I think the same goes for Planetets. Um, a lot better ink, a lot better paper, um, and a pretty decent uh, omnibus release. Then you have stuff like Trigun, which is just one of the absolute shittiest omnibuses I have ever seen. I mean, look how much that bends. It's just insane, the paper is shit, the ink is shit, looks faded sometimes for no reason. Um, so Dark Horse, it just, it, it doesn't do it for me. Their series are pretty darn good, but there's not enough of them, their releases aren't good, and their omnibuses 
sock and they have some kind of weird thing for omnibuses. Uh, so unfortunately they are at the very bottom of the barrel in my opinion. Now next up in fourth place uh, we have Yen Press. Uh, now the, I'll get it out of the way first. Uh, Yen Press is for no, no discernible reason excessively expensive. Uh, this is $13, this is $13, this is $13, this is $13, this is $15 for some reason, and this is $20. That's actually not bad for an omnibus. That's pretty straight in the road. But for some reason, ongoing series like Akame Ga Kill and Soul Eater, for some reason, are $13 when they should be $9.99 like every other publisher would have them. Now, a lot of the time Yen Press defends itself on Twitter and stuff and say that their, their releases are of higher quality and deserve the higher price. Um, now, I, do, I will note that a lot of their series, whether it be that their monthly series or what, um, they do actually have much thicker volumes for some reason. Uh, I think that's mostly because a lot of their series are uh, monthly ongoing series um, but I don't think that that deserves a higher price I mean other publishers have monthly uh, manga that are $9.99 for your standard uh, Tonkabine uh, their page quality is standard sometimes excessively bad <laughs> their ink is pretty good for the most part um, and their series they do have a good number of series. Uh, Smoke and Parade, uh, the new edgelord of uh, manga. Uh, Akame Ga Kill, I really enjoy. Soul Eater, one of my favorite manga out there. Um, I do cringe to uh, Watamote on the reg. I do enjoy Watamote. Uh, Scum's Wist was surprisingly good. Now this is a release by Yen Press that I would feel pretty comfortable spending $13 on. Uh, unfortunately, they made it $15. So as soon as I feel comfortable with a volume that they release being the price they normally charge, they charge more. So Yen Press, uh, I will give it to them. Their releases are good enough. Uh, their series are good. I enjoy a lot of their series. I have many of them. Um, and their release schedule is standard, fairly good. Uh, their price is garbage though. Uh, I really don't understand. So that is number four for Yen Press. Now middle of the road at number three we have the obligatory Viz Media. Um, these guys to me just had to be middle of the road because they have their standard releases here of the big uh, Shonen Jump uh, series that everybody enjoys the mainstream good stuff. Uh, good releases, standard, decent quality paper, decent quality ink, uh, you know, regular release schedule with all those. Those are, you know, nothing to write home about. Uh, then you have their signature line, which I really love. I do really got to give it to uh, Viz's signature lines, the enlarged volumes, the series that they usually do, Tokyo Ghoul, Gangsta, Terra from Mars. Um, are all really good. I love their signature line and then of course Solonin as a uh, omnibus single issue or single volume uh, SIG was very good with a sorry it's still bike week over here sorry about the bikes is still like a pseudo <laughs> slip cover with this flip out which is fantastic. Solonin was a, an amazing release uh, really good quality paper really good ink really good cover and everything was very good then you have the viz bigs which i really like the viz bigs for an omnibus um the you can even see here the spine is barely bent at all actually i wouldn't even say that's bent at all uh it's got really good covers it has really good series in them uh and they you know they open well they've got really good ink they've got really good paper actually i thought the viz bigs had great paper they've also got like the wannabe slip covers on them so the viz bigs i 
kind of wish they'd start doing more of these uh, again. I think they stopped doing Viz Bigs. I haven't seen a Viz Big release in a while, other than if we ever get another Vagabond. Uh, and then their hard covers are usually really nice. We've got uh, Fragments of Horror here with a nice slip cover um, that they actually did a really good job on with a really nice hard cover underneath. Uh, this doesn't have much to speak of on the paper department. It's very nice paper, but it's not amazing. Uh, and then the two great, great hard covers, the Jojoniums, which everybody and their mother likes to talk about. They're great, they're amazing. Uh, and then their Junjay Ito works that they uh, hard covered and uh, bound very well, uh, almost like a standard book, uh, muggle book as I call them. Uh, the paper qualities, again, nothing to write home about, but uh, above average. So Viz, as you can see, they're just able to do so much. They're able to get the, the big Shonen Jump series first. Uh, so I had to put them in middle of the road just to be fair. They just, they have all the money. They're able to do all the things and get all the series. So to me, they had to be middle of the road because they got great series, they got good releases, but they all, but oversaturation doesn't actually mean good. And I think the, the huge number of releases and variety that they have actually can hurt them a bit. Uh, so they had to stay at number three, Viz Media. So at number two, um, which I think comes to a surprise uh, to most of you, uh, to me is actually Kodansha. Uh, and that is because they carry some of my favorite series uh, and they do really good releases and a lot of releases, fairly common. Uh, so my two, two of my favorite ongoing series right now uh, are Happiness and Inuyashiki in the oversized volumes with a matte cover and then a uh, almost embossed cover for Inuyashiki. Uh, their paper quality uh, is good. It feels more matte than the other ones. And their ink is uh, very good, which I think works especially well with uh, Shuzo Oshimi's art style for Happiness. And then, of course, for um, Hiroya Oku's art style uh, for Inuyashiki with really great art and really good ink. And the paper quality here is actually uh, middle of the road good. Then you have other great series like A Silent Voice released in a standard kind of volume. Uh, the Attack on Titan released in standard kind of volumes, but with special editions, which I for one actually enjoy, uh, especially when they did the uh, slip covers. I actually really enjoy the slip covers. Uh, the regular covers are fine and dandy, but the slip covers I think just add more to it. Uh, it's a lot like the Japanese uh, releases usually have nicer, but usually have slip covers. So I thought that's very nice for Attack on Titan. Uh, the Seven Deadly Sins in a standard kind of volume release. Uh, Parasite, which re was released in an oversized kind of volume, not bigger like the Sig, but like almost thicker and wider almost uh, with pretty good ink good uh, good paper quality and everything and then uh, one of my favorite series Akira and they're coming out with later this year a hardcover version of Akira that reads original right to left rather than left to right and even has like I guess the original um, action kanji and whatnot inside uh, now this one, I was impressed with how well it read, how well it opened, how easy it was to, to read with the paper quality being good and the uh, ink looking nice. Uh, in such a big, big issue, it, it actually stayed in my hands fairly well and was pretty easy to flip through. So I'd have to say, partly biased on the uh, titles, uh, Kodansha would have to be my number two. Now last, but the farthest from least, is my personal favorite publisher, Vertical Comics. Now I, for some reason, I don't hear enough people talk about Vertical. Uh, I think Vertical is a phenomenal publishing company, mostly because of their titles. Uh, they have things like No Longer Human, which is fetching insane amounts of prices for good reason, actually. Uh, with the amazing story, uh, Immortal Hounds, one of the one of my top three ongoing series right now, 
Aegean, a phenomenal series that needs to just come out more. Knights of Sidonia, which I just started reading, uh, that's very good. A Girl on the Shore, great Inio Sano. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, which we'll get to later about that release. Blam in this amazingly oversized, like Akira sized volume. Flowers of Evil and Dissolving Classroom. Now, outside of the amazing titles they get, they, they do a lot. You can see a lot of variety here. You have Dissolving Classroom in a slight, slightly larger print than a normal issue, but with, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there these images are raised a bit. I don't know if you can see it at all, but the uh, characters actually stand out from the background. It's got a glossy finish to it with actually a lot of different textures, like the chalkboard's a different texture than the melting dudes. And then these guys stand out. Uh, they've got the Flowers of Evil, which usually has a smooth, uh, glossy finish to it. Same thing with uh, Aujin and Knights of Sidonia and a lot of their smaller publications. Then they have slightly long, slightly large, almost omnibus style. Still a little shorter though. Uh, publications for things like A Girl on the Shore, which I should not be flipping through <laughs> with its little graphic. Uh, and then of course, the best best published work of all time mobile suit gundam the origin great story but the release is just the most incredible thing you could ask for from a manga publisher it's hardcover it's paper quality is the highest you could possibly get the ink is just phenomenal it's hard to see with that glare but you just you have to hold one of these volumes to really experience how amazing it is and then like i said before blam in a very large akira sized release oops with a really good page quality as well not quite photocopy like uh the mobile suit gundam uh and really good ink quality and everything on that and then a personal bias i have is these smaller volumes which i keep dropping all over the ground these smaller volumes I actually really enjoy because of the way they sit in your hand and because I feel like they're able to put a lot more quality into the paper and the ink of these series, most notably, in my opinion, in Ajin, which is really, really tiny, uh, but has some of the best uh, ink and paper quality I've seen in small size releases including standard size releases so these small ones i actually really enjoy based on the way they the way they fit in your hand the covers are always nice and glossy finish the paper is always of good good higher end quality and the ink is always very well done and of course like i said before the variety they have mini size issues they have standard size issues they have omnibus size issues they have hard covers that are amazing they have extra super large issues so personally i find vertical to be uh head and shoulders above the rest in amazing titles good releases fairly steady releases their newer their newer series are coming out a much more brisk pace than some of the other series um, and just overall this frankly pulls them ahead by quite a lot <laughs> and then I have a slight bias against the uh, the smaller size issues just because they feel nice and they fit fit in your hand very well so to me vertical comics definitely the best publisher in my opinion so again to breeze over we have number one in first place vertical comics second place kodansha third viz fourth yen press fifth dark horse and a distant sixth seven c's so tell me what you think guys uh what do you think of my opinions on them uh do you think my ranking was right or complete bias bullshit that you completely hate and i should probably quit collecting manga and go hide out in the woods and just disappear into the ether or how better yet how would you rank them what are your opinions make a video response comment down below what you think of these publishers and how you would rank them and whether you would even put seven c's on this list at all 
So please tell me what you think down below. Hope you all enjoyed and I will catch you all next time. Peace. Hellcat.